All right. So today we are going like deep, deep into the world of fasting. Ooh, fun. But uh, more specifically, all the myths and misconceptions that kind of swirl around it. Yeah. You know, it seems like everyone's either like trying fasting or talking about it or, right. you know, reading about it. But For sure. But there's so much conflicting information out there. Yeah. Um, and so we've got... And hard to know what's what. Yeah, yeah. We've got a ton of research. Yeah. We've got expert opinions. We're going to sift through it all. I love it. And hopefully get to the bottom of some of this stuff. Yeah. So get ready to separate fact from fiction. Absolutely. And honestly, some of the stuff we found is pretty surprising. Oh, really? Like, did you know that short-term fasting might actually, like, rev up your metabolism? Oh, wow. Instead of slowing it down? Interesting. Or that it could potentially be good for your heart. Really? Yeah. Huh. We're going to tackle all that and more. Okay. Um, with our expert here. So let's do it. Let's get started. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Like, we tend to think of just, like, constant food availability as the norm. Right. But, like, from an evolutionary perspective, our bodies are actually pretty accustomed to, like, periods of going without food. Right. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. So maybe some of these fasting myths come from, like, not fully understanding how our bodies are designed to work. Exactly. Like, take the common belief that fasting just, like, completely tanks your metabolism. Right. That's myth number one, and it's a big one. Yeah. That's definitely something I've heard a lot. Yeah. And what's fascinating is that short-term fasting, we're talking, like, a couple of days max. Okay. Can actually increase your metabolic rate. Wow. This happens because your body releases norepinephrine a hormone that acts like a signal flare. Okay. To kick your fat burning system into high gear. Okay. Some studies have shown this metabolic boost can be as high as 14%. Wait, so you're telling me like skipping a meal could actually make me more energetic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty counterintuitive. Yeah. It seems that way, right? But the key here is short-term fasting. Okay. Prolonged fasting, on the other hand, can indeed slow down metabolism as Fine. your body tries to conserve energy. Right. Which makes sense from a survival standpoint. Right, of course. Yeah. So it's about finding that balance, not pushing it too far. Precisely. And that's why techniques like intermittent fasting. Right. Where you cycle between eating and fasting windows have become so popular. Yeah. It's a more sustainable approach. Well, that makes sense. It's not about deprivation. It's about like strategic timing. Exactly. Okay, let's move on to another like big concern, especially for those of us who hit the gym regularly. Okay. Myth number two claims that fasting is basically a one-way ticket to losing all your hard-earned muscle. Oh. What's the truth behind that one? Good news for the fitness enthusiasts out there. Your muscles are safe. Okay. Your body is actually quite clever in how it manages energy stores. Okay. It prioritizes using up those fat reserves before resorting to breaking down muscle tissue. Okay. And there's even some research indicating that fasting might increase the production of human growth hormone, or HGH. Wow, so that actually helps with muscle growth and maintenance. Exactly. Yeah. So not only is fasting not gonna like cannibalize your muscles, right? but it might actually help them grow stronger. Wow. Of course, pairing fasting with strength training and adequate protein intake during eating windows is still crucial. Right. Of course, makes sense. Yeah. Okay, that's reassuring, especially since so many people worry about that. Right. Um, now, this next one really caught my attention because it seems like common knowledge. Okay. Myth number three. Fasting is bad for your heart. Uh-huh. But what I found in the research is that it's a lot more nuanced than that, right? Absolutely. In fact, intermittent fasting can have some pretty significant benefits for heart health. Okay. One of the key mechanisms is that it helps reduce inflammation. Okay a major culprit in many chronic diseases, including heart disease. So it's like tamping down that simmering fire that can damage our arteries. That's a great way to put it. And the benefits don't stop there. Okay. Fasting can also lower blood pressure, which is huge for heart health. Okay. This happens because it improves the flexibility of your blood vessels, making it easier for blood to flow. So it's not just about what we eat, but when we eat too. Exactly. And there's even more good news. Okay. Fasting can improve cholesterol levels. Okay. We're talking lower LDL cholesterol, the bad kind, and lower triglycerides, both of which are linked to an increased risk of heart disease. Wow. So it's like a heart health triple play. Yeah. I'm seeing a pattern here that so many of these myths seem to stem from the idea that depriving your body of anything, even temporarily, is automatically bad. That's a really insightful observation, and it leads us perfectly into another important aspect of heart health that's positively impacted by fasting insulin sensitivity. Okay. You see, when your cells become more sensitive to insulin, it means your body can use glucose more efficiently, which not only benefits your heart, 
but also helps prevent type 2 diabetes. Okay, so we're seeing this ripple effect where fasting impacts multiple systems in the body, and a lot of those impacts are positive. Right. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah. But let's tackle another common concern, which is the fear that fasting inevitably leads to nutrient deficiency. Okay. That's myth number four on our list. Yeah. Is there any truth to that worry? Well, it's true that you do need to be more mindful about what you eat when you're fasting. Right. However, it doesn't automatically equal a nutritional shortage. Okay. Think of it this way. You're essentially condensing your eating window. Okay. So making each meal count becomes even more important. So instead of just grabbing whatever's convenient, I need to be strategic about getting those nutrient powerhouses into my meal. Exactly. Focus on foods that pack a nutritional punch, like lean proteins, think salmon, chicken breast, or lentils, wow. healthy fats like those found in avocados, walnuts, and olive oil, and of course, plenty of colorful fruits and vegetables. If you're concerned about meeting your nutritional needs, talking to a registered dietitian can help you create a meal plan that works for your individual needs. That's great advice. It's a reminder that fasting isn't just about not eating. It's also about making conscious, healthy choices when you do eat. Right. All right. Ready to tackle the final myth on our list. Yes. This one really blew my mind when I first came across it. Okay. Myth number five claims that fasting is only good for weight loss. Mm -hmm. But from everything we've discussed so far, it seems like there's a lot more to the story, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. While weight loss is often a welcome side effect of fasting, it's by no means the only benefit, and it might not even be the most significant one. Okay. One of the most exciting areas of research is focused on a process called autophagy. Okay, I've heard that term before, but I'm not sure I fully understand it. Yeah. Break it down for me. Think of autophagy as your body's internal re recycling and cleaning crew. It's essentially a cellular process that identifies damaged cells and proteins and breaks them down, allowing your body to eliminate them and create new healthy cells. Okay. Imagine taking out the trash in your cells, getting rid of all the junk that builds up over time. So it's like hitting the reset button on a cellular level. That's a great analogy, and the implications of this are pretty profound. Okay. Studies have shown that autophagy can improve memory, reduce inflammation throughout the body, and even protect against certain types of cancer. Wow. It's not just some theoretical concept. It has tangible benefits for our health and well-being. Wow, that's incredible. So it's not just about shedding pounds. It's about cellular rejuvenation. Exactly. It makes you wonder what else we might discover about fasting's potential in the future. It's an incredibly exciting field of research. Yeah. And beyond autophagy, there's growing evidence that fasting can improve cognitive function enhance mental clarity, and potentially even protect against neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. Okay, that's pretty remarkable. It sounds almost too good to be true, but the research seems pretty solid. It is. So if we take a step back and look at all the myths we've debunked and the science we've explored, what's the key takeaway for our listeners? I think the most important message is to approach fasting from an informed perspective. It's not a magic bullet, mm. but when done correctly and safely, it can be a powerful tool for improving overall health and well-being. Right. It's not about starving yourself or following some restrictive fad diet. It's about understanding how fasting works, finding an approach that fits your lifestyle, and being mindful of your overall health goals. Exactly. And remember, everyone is different. Right. What works for one person might not work for another. Of course. Listening to your body and finding what feels right for you is that's crucial. That's such an important point. It's not one size fits all. Right. Now, before we wrap up, I have a question that's been bouncing around in my head ever since we started talking about fasting's potential to boost brain function. Right. You mentioned improved memory and cognitive function, but could it actually make us more creative or better problem solvers? That's a fascinating question and one that researchers are starting to explore. Okay. There's some evidence suggesting that fasting can increase the production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF. Okay, BDNF. Refresh my memory on that one. What exactly is it, and why is it important? Think of BDNF as a fertilizer for your brain cells. Okay. It helps them grow, thrive, and form new connections. And we know that creativity and problem-solving rely heavily on this ability to forge new neural pathways and come up with innovative solutions. So if BDNF is like fertilizer and fasting boosts BDNF, could we say that fasting is like giving our brains a mental workout, helping them become more agile and creative? That's a really interesting way to think about it, and it's certainly a possibility worth exploring. There's some anecdotal evidence that people feel sharper and more focused during or after a fast, but more research is needed to establish a direct link between fasting and creativity. Well, I have to admit, that's a pretty exciting thought.
Imagine if something as simple as adjusting our eating patterns could unlock hidden creative potential. I am definitely intrigued. I am too. It's a reminder that we've only just scratched the surface of what we know about the human body and its incredible capacity to adapt and thrive. We've come a long way from the idea that fasting is just a weight loss tool. Right. It's becoming clear that it can impact our health and well-being on a much deeper level. Absolutely. And as with any health practice, knowledge is power. Right. The more we understand about the science behind fasting, the better equipped we are to make informed decisions about whether it's right for us and how to incorporate it safely and effectively into our lives. Well said. This has been an incredible deep dive into the world of fasting. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. You're welcome. I feel like we've debunked some major myths, explored some fascinating science, and maybe even opened the door to some mind-bending possibilities. Yeah, for sure. What are your final thoughts for our listeners who might be considering giving fasting a try? My advice would be to start slow. Listen to your body and do your research. Okay. There are many different approaches to fasting, so find what works best for you and your lifestyle. And of course, consult with your doctor, especially if you have any underlying health conditions. Absolutely. Safety should always be the top priority. For sure. Well, I think we've given our listeners a lot to think about today. We've busted some major fasting myths, explored the science-backed benefits, and even pondered some pretty mind-bending possibilities when it comes to brain power. Right. It's been a fascinating journey. It really has. If there's one thing I hope people take away from this deep dive, it's that fasting is more than just a diet trend. It's a powerful tool that can impact our health and well-being in some pretty profound ways. And as with any tool, knowing how to use it safely and effectively is key. Right. So do your research, talk to your doctor, and find what works best for you. Well said. To our listeners, we hope you found this episode insightful and maybe even a little bit inspiring. If you're curious to learn more, we'll be sure to include links to studies and resources in our show notes. And if you have any personal experiences with fasting, whether positive or negative, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Yes. Sharing your experiences can help others navigate this complex and often misunderstood world of fasting. Absolutely. Your insights could be incredibly valuable to someone else who's just starting their fasting journey. Right. All right. That's all the time we have for today. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep diving deep. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Which not only benefits your heart, but also helps prevent type 2 diabetes. Okay. So we're seeing this ripple effect where fasting impacts multiple systems in the body. Right. And a lot of those impacts are positive. Yeah. That's pretty remarkable. But let's tackle another common concern, which is the fear that fasting inevitably leads to nutrient deficiency. Okay. That's myth number four on our list. Right. Is there any truth to that worry? Well, it's true that you do need to be more mindful about what you eat when you're fasting. Right. right. However, it doesn't automatically equal a nutritional shortage. Okay. Think of it this way. You're essentially condensing your eating window. Right. So making each meal count becomes even more important. So instead of just grabbing whatever is convenient, yeah. I need to be strategic about getting those nutrient powerhouses into my meals. Exactly. Yeah. Focus on foods that pack a nutritional punch, like lean proteins. Go. Oh. Think salmon, chicken breast, or lentils, healthy fats like those found in avocados, right. walnuts, and olive oil, yeah. and of course, plenty of colorful fruits and vegetables. Yeah, of course. If you're concerned about meeting your nutritional needs, Talking to a registered dietitian can help you create a meal plan that works for your individual needs. That's great advice. It's a reminder that fasting isn't just about not eating. It's also about making conscious, healthy choices when you do eat. Right. All right. Ready to tackle the final myth on our list. Yes. This one really blew my mind when I first came across it. Okay. Myth number five claims that fasting is only good for weight loss. But from everything we've discussed so far, right it seems like there's a lot more to the story, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. While weight loss is often a welcome side effect of fasting, it's by no means the only benefit. Okay. And it might not even be the most significant one. Okay. One of the most exciting areas of research is focused on a process called autophagy. Okay, I've heard that term before, but I'm not sure I fully understand it. Break it down for me. Think of autophagy as your body's internal recycling and cleaning crew. Okay. It's essentially a cellular process that identifies damaged cells and proteins and breaks them down, oh. allowing your body to eliminate them and create new healthy cells. Okay. Imagine taking out the trash in your cells, getting rid of all the junk that builds up over time. 
So it's like hitting the reset button on a cellular level. That's a great analogy, and the implications of this are pretty profound. Okay. Studies have shown that autophagy can improve memory, okay. reduce inflammation throughout the body, and even protect against certain types of cancer. It's not just some theoretical concept. It has tangible benefits for our health and well-being. Wow, that's incredible. So it's not just about shedding pounds. It's about cellular rejuvenation. Exactly. Makes you wonder what else we might discover about fasting's potential in the future. It's an incredibly exciting field of research and beyond autophagy. Yeah. There's growing evidence that fasting can improve cognitive function, enhance mental clarity, and potentially even protect against neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. Okay, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah. It sounds almost too good to be true, but the research seems pretty solid. It is. So if you take a step back and look at all the myths we've debunked and the science we've explored, right. what's the key takeaway for our listeners? I think the most important message is to approach fasting from an informed perspective. Okay. It's not a magic bullet, but when done correctly and safely, it can be a powerful tool for improving overall health and well-being. Right. It's not about starving yourself or following some restrictive fad diet. It's about understanding how fasting works, finding an approach that fits your lifestyle. Exactly. And being mindful of your overall health goals. And remember, everyone is different. Right. What works for one person might not work for another. Of course. Listening to your body and finding what feels right for you is crucial. That's such an important point. It's not one size fits all. Right. Now, before we wrap up, I have a question that's been bouncing around in my head ever since we started talking about fasting's potential to boost brain function. Okay. You mentioned improved memory and cognitive function, mm -hmm. but could it actually make us more creative or better problem solvers? That's a fascinating question and one that researchers are starting to explore. Okay. There's some evidence suggesting that fasting can increase the production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, mm -mm. or BDNF. Okay, BDNF. Refresh my memory on that one. What exactly is it, and why is it important? Think of BDNF as a fertilizer for your brain cells. Okay. It helps them grow, thrive, and form new connections. Okay. And we know that creativity and problem-solving rely heavily on this ability to forge new neural pathways and come up with innovative solutions. So if BDNF is like fertilizer right. and fasting boosts BDNF, could we say that fasting is like giving our brains a mental workout, helping them become more agile and creative? That's a really interesting way to think about it, and it's certainly a possibility worth exploring. Okay. There's some anecdotal evidence that people feel sharper and more focused during or after a fast. Okay. But more research is needed to establish a direct link between fasting and creativity. Well, I have to admit, that's a pretty exciting thought. It is. Imagine if something as simple as adjusting our eating patterns could unlock hidden creative potential. Right. I'm definitely intrigued. I am too. <laughs> it's a reminder that we've only just scratched the surface of what we know about the human body and its incredible capacity to adapt and thrive. We've come a long way from the idea that fasting is just a weight loss tool. Right. It's becoming clear that it can impact our health and well-being on a much deeper level. Absolutely. And... As with any health practice, knowledge is power. Right. The more we understand about the science behind fasting, the better equipped we are to make informed decisions about whether it's right for us and how to incorporate it safely and effectively into our lives. Well said. This has been an incredible deep dive into the world of fasting. It has been. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. I feel like we've debunked some major myths explored some fascinating science, and maybe even opened the door to some mind-bending possibilities. Yeah, for sure. What are your final thoughts for our listeners who might be considering giving fasting a try? My advice would be to start slow, listen to your body, and do your research. Okay. There are many different approaches to fasting, so find what works best for you and your lifestyle. And of course, consult with your doctor, especially if you have any underlying health conditions. Absolutely. Safety should always be the top priority. For sure. Well, I think we've given our listeners a lot to think about today. We've busted some major fasting myths, explored the science-backed benefits, and even pondered some pretty mind-bending possibilities when it comes to brain power. It's been a fascinating journey. Really has. If there's one thing I hope people take away from this deep dive, it's that fasting is more than just a diet trend. Right. It's a powerful tool that can impact our health and well-being in some pretty profound ways. And as with any tool, knowing how to use it safely and effectively is key. Right. So do your research, talk to your doctor, and find what works best for you. Well said.
To our listeners, we hope you found this deep dive insightful and maybe even a little bit inspiring if you're curious to learn more. We'll be sure to include links to studies and resources in our show notes. And if you have any personal experiences with fasting, whether positive or negative, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Yeah. Sharing your experiences can help others navigate this complex and often misunderstood world of fasting. Absolutely. Your insights could be incredibly valuable to someone else who's just starting their fasting journey. All right. That's all the time we have for today. Until next time, keep exploring. <laughs>